2, plus ESPN Radio on Sirius XM, Channel 80, plus ESPN Radio simulcast over the live national television airwaves of ESPN News. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Quote, buy and save on home insurance with Progressive's home code Explorer. Only at Progressive.com. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Jam-packed show coming your way today. Got a lot of stuff to get into, but believe it or not, uh, rather than start off on a little basketball because I'm watching the Lakers, a team that I picked to win the chip, uh, continue to soar and continue to roll uh, tomorrow night in Miami. I'm depressed as all get out because I don't think because of personal commitments I'm going to have an opportunity to make that game. But my God. The Los Angeles Lakers against the Miami Heat. This appears to be incredibly compelling. I don't know if you've been watching the highlights. I don't know if you understand what's going on in South Beach, but it looks pretty damn good. I'm telling you that right now. It looks pretty special what's happening in South Beach. You can make an argument right now that Jimmy Butler is acting like the second best player in the Eastern Conference behind the Greek freak right now. Giannis Antetokounmpo in Milwaukee. So that's something to get into. The Lakers are something to get into. Kawhi returning to Toronto is something to get into. James Harden dropping 55, but something very, very conspicuous that Jay Williams, I noted NBA analyst on NBA Countdown on Get Up, showed up on first take this morning and pointed out something that most of you might have missed that I don't think you need to ignore. That's something I will definitely get into. I'm also going to get into a little NFL action because we got Thursday night football. Now, for the record, ladies and gentlemen, I really, really don't understand why there are promotions out there that the New York Jets are playing on national television tonight. I really don't understand it, especially with Jamal Adams probably out for this game. I don't understand it at all. Why can't you just promote that the Ravens are playing, that Lamar Jackson is coming? He's continuing his quest for league MVP honors. Why can't you do that and just stop there without naming the opponent? Why can't you pull that off? Because I don't know a damn soul outside of Fireman Ed and a few gangrene lovers that give two hoots, that give less than a damn about the New York Jets. I mean, the fact of the matter is, it's just not that, it's not much to watch. Unless you're looking for Gates to start Gacing again. Unless that's what you're looking for, I don't understand the problem. But I'll get into all of that a little bit later. There's the footage right there with him looking up and down. I don't give a damn what nobody say. I have no evidence of this, no proof of this whatsoever. I'm just going by how he looks. But that press conference, he looked high. He looked flat out high. Somebody got to say it. So I'm going to say it. That's how he looked. Anyway, I move on. That's one football item we're getting into. The other is that Antonio Brown... Uh, all worldwide receiver who's unemployed at the moment. Uh, has got some things to say about a few people. Uh, I'm going to get into all of that. Don't you worry about it. I'll get, in, I'll, I, I'll get into it. But I got to admit this to you. The lead story on my mind right now, because I was away yesterday on business, the lead story in my mind are the New York Yankees acquiring Gary Cole, let me be very, very clear. I don't think any pitcher is worth nine years. The $324 million, that's a different matter altogether. $36 million a year, that's a different matter altogether. But the nine years, hell no. I don't believe it. But I'd have paid it to Gary Cole. I ain't going to lie to y'all. He's all world. He's the real deal. And it is inexplicable and damn near criminal that in a game seven, when A.J. Hinch had this guy standing in the bullpen ready to go because the game seven was on the line, a World Series title was on the line, the manager for the Houston Astros left this guy standing in the bullpen eating pumpkin seeds. I mean, that's just ridiculous. 
I don't give a damn how your clothes is made. I don't give a damn how, how what took what got you there, whatever. This is Gary Cole we're talking about here. Cole was unquestionably one of the top two pitchers in all of baseball over the last two seasons. Absolutely nothing short of sensational. An ace in every sense of the word. Who was very successful against the Washington Nationals. And you had a game seven on your home turf and you just let him stand in the bullpen. There's nothing to talk about. 268 ERA, .96 whip, 37% strikeout percentage. Both years in a, in, in a Cy Young Award race. Top two. Two all-star selections. What is there to talk about? The Yankees finally stepped up and got themselves an ace. Finally stepped up and stopped acting like Severino or Tanaka was an ace. Or Paxson. Or don't get me started with J.A. Happ. Or, or J. Happ. Don't get me started with that. There's nothing to talk about. You needed an ace. And you went out and got one. And for the record, I know New Yorkers remember this. Yankee haters everywhere probably remember this. But Devin, I'm going to remind you as a diehard Yankee lover. They haven't won a World Series since 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take it one step further. They haven't been to a World Series since 2009. It's the first time in the history of the most storied franchise in all the sports ever with 27 World Series titles on its resume. It's the first time that the Yankees have ever gone a decade without going to the World Series, let alone winning one. You had to do this. You had to do this. I applaud them for this, but I got news for you. I haven't looked at the news reports. And I don't know whether Madison Bumgarner has signed with anybody yet. But I got news for you. If he hasn't, and I apologize if I'm asleep at the wheel on my job, because I've had a number of other things to do, primarily involving football and basketball, that I haven't paid much attention to baseball outside of these exorbitant signings. But I'm telling you right now, last time I checked, Madison Bumgarner was a free agent. Mads, last time I checked, he was last seen with the San Francisco Giants. Last time I checked, when it comes to closing, meaning an ace, showing up and handling their business when it counts most, we'll never forget Madison Bumgarner. And if that brother is available, guess what, Yankees? You ain't finished yet. Go get him. Go get him. I know the Nationals re-signed Strasburg. Bryce Harper ain't there anymore. Didn't stop them from getting to the World Series for the first time and winning it all. But Rendon is gone. Now, he's an angel. Angels didn't get Cole, who they wanted desperately, but they showed up and got him. You're looking at him and saying, look at the numbers that he put up last year for the Washington Nationals. It's something special to behold. Well, I got news for you. As much as that's going to help Mike Trout, it ain't going to help the Los Angeles Angels or Anaheim. Which, by the way, that's a name that's just entirely too long. But the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim ain't winning no damn World Series. Well, what they've got. And as far as I'm concerned, he struck lightning at the right time. Because I don't know if Rendon will ever have another year like this again. Now, maybe he will because when you're around Mike Trout, Mike Trout, that could be contagious. We all know he's the monster. But I ain't worried about no damn angels. I worry about the, uh, uh, the Red Sox a little bit because they're a nemesis. I'll definitely worry about the Astros. I ain't worried about no angels. I certainly ain't worried about no Minnesota Twins. I don't care how many 307 home runs that they smacked. Who gave a damn? How did that matter? How did that mess up? Or, or how did that, what did that equate to once they went up against the Yankees? And the reason why I say bum garner, go out there and get him. Again, I apologize if he went somewhere else and I missed it. But I don't think he did. And I'm here to tell you something right now. If the Yankees have an opportunity to get him, get that man. I thought you should have got Granky. Who, by the way, showed up and played effective in the World Series, too. But in case you didn't, since you didn't do that, get Madison Bumgarner. 
Put him and Cole in the rotation. Leave Tanaka and Severino there. And then you're going to have something. Now, for those of you who don't want to listen to me, I don't blame you. I'm just a fan. Watching baseball when I have the time to do so. I'm a very, very busy man. So I would encourage you, my man Michael K., the voice of the New York Yankees, afternoon drive host in New York, 98.7 FM, with my man Don Juan LaGreca. I would encourage you to listen to them. Listen to Michael K. Tune into that if you're in New York City and see what he feels. But I think you need to go get that man. I'm just happy that the Yankees spent the money. Because, damn it, when you're in New York, you spend money. That's what you do. Everything costs. Nothing's free. Nothing's cheap. It's how we, it's how we do it. Period. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Story number two. Roger Goodell and the National Football League want to complete what they term will be a thorough investigation before reaching a conclusion about Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. Ladies and gentlemen, to me, it's much ado about nothing. I know that the Carltons of the world and others would find what I'm saying sacrilegious, but here's my point. Unless you're going to confiscate picks, possibly suspend Bill Belichick, uh, uh, confiscate uh, draft picks, fine the New England Patriots, what's the big deal? Because here's the reality of the situation. You thought the New England Patriots cheated when they went up against the St. Louis Rams and won the Super Bowl. You thought they were cheating when they beat the Carolina Panthers. There's Spygate, there's the Flategate. Now you have this. Most of their Super Bowls were, were nail biters, if not all of them. Let's look at the two, six Super Bowls they won. They beat St. Louis and Carolina. The Eagles were a tough uh, one as well. Seattle was tough. Atlanta was tough. They lost to Philadelphia. They lost to the Giants twice. They beat the Rams. Nine trips to the Super Bowl, six titles. My personal opinion is I don't want to hear a damn thing about cheating. They've been coaching every year. They've been playing every year. They haven't been banned. They haven't been exiled. So the question is, whatever they're doing, why the hell hasn't the 31 other teams figured out what they're doing and learned to duplicate it? And oh, by the way, what damage to their reputation are they going to receive? You've been talking about them this way anyway. You think Bill Belichick gives a damn what you think as long as he gets to hoist that, hoist that Lombardi trophy? You think Tom Brady gives a damn what you think at this particular moment in time? Julian Edelman? Stephon Gilmore? Van Noy and the boys? You think they care? Been talking about them anyway. They gonna lose no sleep over what y'all saying. And my attitude is simple. I don't want to hear, oh, do you think they're cheating or not? Above? Figure it out. Beat them. Because there's no excuse for one team in the National Football League to exercise the level of dominance that the New England Patriots have exercised, and then you get to talk about them. Because by claiming them to be cheaters and holding steadfast to that belief in that position, it's letting the other 31 teams off the hook. Sean Payne, why have you only been to one Super Bowl with Drew Brees as your quarterback? Why? Why? How come you haven't done better than that? The host of other coaches around. Ron Rivera, now fired as head coach for the Carolina Panthers, who I like and respect a great deal. Why do you consider three division titles in nine years a success? Why? Pete Carroll, two Super Bowl trips, a Super Bowl title. When are you going to admit what damage you did to the team by electing to throw the football so Russell Wilson could be a hero instead of giving the ball to beast mode Marshawn Lynch at the half yard line? New England would have had a fourth Super Bowl loss and one less Super Bowl ring. Quinn, you're the head coach for the Atlanta Falcons. Kyle Shanahan was your offensive coordinator. Why in the hell do you have a 28-3 lead and you decide not to run the football? And keep letting New England come back 
and keep facilitating their comeback by stopping the clock with every other play because of the incompletions you were throwing. Or the strip sacks you were giving up to the high towers of the world. What about that? Man, Nagy, you sure you should believe in Mitchell Trubisky? Mike McCarthy, how come he only has got the one Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback? Dallas, whether it's Jerry Jones, Jason Garrett, or both, when are you going to stop lying about your relevancy? And start making sure that you're doing what America's team is supposed to do. That's win since America's the greatest country in the world. Doug Peterson, Philadelphia Eagles. Sure you made the right decision with keeping Carson Wentz? Letting go of Nick Foles? I think you did, but are you sure? New York Giants, what happened to your gold standard? How come you ain't that no more? This question is about everybody in the National Football League, except Belichick and the Patriots. Is it possible that sitting there and calling them cheaters is the easy way out to avoid discussing the efficiencies and the ineptitudes of practically everybody else in the National Football League? Is that possible? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. At some point in time, how about, listen, here's my thing about Bill Belichick. I have never heard a player neglect or negate saying he's not the best. These players talk about preparation, expertise, knowledge and know-how, and commitments to details. And he is the first the second, and the last name to come up all the damn time. If cheating was what it was all about, wouldn't the players tell us even after they left? Especially if they got cut and unceremoniously let go by the man? I'd say so, but that is not what has happened to Bill Belichick. They don't talk about him like that. They talk about him with deference and reverence. I don't happen to think that's an accident. I love Andy Reid. Respect the hell out of Andy Reid. Covered him for more of my years in Philadelphia. Love this man. He's never won a Super Bowl in 20 years. At some point in time, we talk about Bill Belichick and the Patriots. When do we talk about everybody else? 888-ESPN, it's 888-729-3776. I know a lot of you out there on Twitter, and we see the latest, you know, shrapnel thrown in my direction. Antonio Brown, all-world receiver, arguably the best since Jerry Rice, one of the greatest receivers we have ever seen, yet still unemployed uh, because he's not in the National Football League. Uh, went on um, on the air and, you know, on Twitter, on social media, of course, you know, throwing jabs at the NFL, throwing jabs at Big Ben Roethlisberger, throwing jabs at me, yours truly, tweeting his frustration at the NFL, at Drew Rosenhaus, the NFL PA, the media. So now he's attacking his own agent. He's attacking me. He's attacking the NFL. He's calling people racist. Me and Uncle Tom, of course, you know, that's a popular thing. I could go in. That's just beating somebody while they down. I would remind everybody, I think I said that if I'm the Patriots, I'd bring Antonio Brown back. I remind everybody I said that. I guess he doesn't like the fact that I highlighted and pointed out his stupidity. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> Antonio Brown, threw away $29,125,000. It was a Thursday. All he had to do was shut the hell up until Tuesday morning. His money would have been guaranteed. Antonio Brown goes into the New England Patriots. You tweet you, you, you tweet stuff or sending somebody, you know, notes that are alleging you committed a sexual assault crime against them. Patriots tell you to shut up, pipe it down, be quiet. You ignore them. 
You had $9 million guaranteed coming your way. When an additional $6 million in incentives, you threw that away. You had a chance to make $30 million, threw that away. Had a chance to make half of that and couldn't last two weeks. Are you at fault? According to Antonio Brown a week ago, sure. Actually apologized to the Patriots, didn't want to cause any drama, he just wanted to play hard and win. But the minute the NFL didn't reinstate him and reinsert him, and the Patriots made it clear they weren't bringing him back, now he goes after everybody again. Okay. You bring that stuff on yourself. You know, people have been tweeting at me and talking to me because there's an article out about me on GQ magazine. You know, and you know they damn good article. I didn't agree with everything they were saying, but it was a damn good article. And that guy's an incredible writer. Deserves a lot of credit. I didn't agree with everything. I didn't agree with how things were uh, contextualized and people try to take stuff and, well, you know, hey, you know, and they even talking to me about a company, man. But let me educate y'all about something. <clears throat> Everything that happens does not happen in broad daylight. You fight fights. You battle. You put forth valiant effort to create and provoke change. For the better, not just for yourself if you got a soul, but for others as well. But if you want to call me a company dude because I recognize a chain of command. And I understand that even though you get to express yourself and you get to voice your opinions and you get to sit up there and have some influence and 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 to help take a stand and to do and to contribute to making things better for people beyond yourself. But that doesn't mean that you have all the power and it doesn't mean that you get to say what you want, do what you want, how you want to do it, when you want to do it, while you have your hand out for somebody else's money. If the fact that I'm intelligent enough to understand that makes me a sellout, so be it. I heard what a lot of people had to say. I saw the insinuations. My response to that is, when the grass gets mowed, the snakes come out. When the grass gets mowed, the snakes come out. Here's the difference between me and most people. I don't need the grass to get mowed in order to see the snakes. I saw them all along. I see them now. I know exactly who the hell they are. And I don't give a damn. You're Antonio Brown. You threw Mike Tomlin under the bus. You threw Big Ben Roethlisberger under the bus. You threw Juju Smith-Schuster under the bus. You threw Mike Mayock under the bus. You threw John Gruden under the bus. You drew, you threw... Owner Robert Kraft under the bus. You threw NFL commissioner Roger Goodell under the bus. You threw the NFL Players Association under the bus. And now you even throw in your own agent, Drew Rosenhaus, under the bus. I just named nine different people. Antonio Brown's a bigger sellout than me. Because he sold out himself. And is literally throwing his own career away. Just because he can't chill. And this sellout right here was saying, I'd like to see him back in the league. Okay. Okay. So be it. So be it. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. To your calls and more in a minute. So don't touch that dial. You're listening live to Stephen A. 
ESPN Radio, ESPN News. That was Straight Talk Wireless. Everything for less, only at Walmart. By the way, did you know the arrow on Amazon's logo represents A to Z? Maybe the My Computer Career logo should represent unemployed to employed. Ryan was out of work when he started clapping.